Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. We're continuing our series of interviews about the book, The Ugly Canadian, Stephen Harper's Foreign Policy. And joining us again from Vancouver is Eve Angler, the author of that book. Thanks for joining us, Eve. Thanks for having me. So Canada historically has tried to have the image, and in some occasions actually done so, of being real supporters of international law. And I suppose the most important case of that was the U.S. invasion of Iraq, where Prime Minister Kachin stayed out of the Iraq war, and primarily as the reason gave that there had not been a clear Security Council resolution endorsing it. And because of that, under, under tremendous pressure by the United States, would not join the Iraq war. Of course, Canada did send troops and, and, partic- and continues to participate in Afghanistan. But if you look at Stephen Harper on Libya, the uh, resolution of the United Nations was rather clear, that wh- whether you agree with it or not. It was about support for Benghazi. It was not about regime change in Libya. And I remember very clearly uh, Prime Minister Cameron of, of the Great Britain being interviewed where he emphatically said many times this is not about overthrow of Gaddafi, it's not regime change, it's a defensive position only and we of course we know what actually happened. So what was Canada's role in all of this? Well the Canadian government was major proponent, major, put a major role in the bombing of Libya and the whole campaign. It was a Canadian general that uh, oversaw the whole NATO mission uh, that signed off on all the different uh, bombing targets. And as a result, uh, Canadian fighter jets were involved in some of the most violent of the bombing campaigns, uh, in that uh, Canadian, some other countries had controls on where their fighter jets could, uh, could drop bombs, whereas because it was a Canadian general uh, directing everything, Canadian fighter jets uh, never, never said no to any, uh, to any of the bombing campaigns. Um, something like 10% of all the, uh, uh, the, the sorties were by Canadian, uh, Canadian jets. And... Uh, the the Harper government was active in all the different levels. In in, uh, in June, uh, the foreign minister John Baird, uh, just after becoming the foreign minister in the Conservative government, he immediately went to Benghazi uh, to meet with the rebels. Uh, we know, according to access to information, that he encouraged them to uh, to keep up the fight. Uh, so he was, uh, uh, you know, continue, to continue the continue the war. Uh, we know now that uh, Ontario companies uh, sold a drone to the rebels uh, explicitly in contravention to the UN Resolution uh, 1970 and, and later 1973 about weapons uh, to the to the rebels. Uh, uh, we know that, or well, at least there was uh, many media reports about uh, Joint Task Force to the Canadian Special Commandos that they were actually on the ground in Libya. Uh, there's reports out about how the uh, Canadian fighter jet was in the air uh, on the at the time when uh, Gaddafi was was killed uh, by a by a NATO strike. Uh, it's not clear if uh, if the Canadian jet launched the missile or uh, I've heard claims it was a French fighter jet. It's not exactly clear. Uh, and of course, that whole incident there was an incredible. Uh, uh, war crimes that took place uh, on the ground when Gaddafi was killed, and uh, something like 75 of the people around him, uh, or that were caught by the by the uh, by the uh, um, the rebels, were were executed. Human Rights Watch did an investigation report which verified that information. And that's all stuff. You know, there hasn't been basically any comment from uh, from can- Canadian uh, 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 military political officials since then. After the war, not long after the bombing of Libya, there was a big celebration. The Conservative government spent eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars celebrating uh, the Canadian military effort there. Uh, they, you know, they, they talk up, talk it up uh, regularly. But all the human rights violations that uh, that transpired in that process and and the ongoing uh, co- conflict is is basically not discussed uh, um, by by the Canadian government or, for that matter, really the dominant media here. Now, I mentioned the Iraq situation where I think there was a a break with certainly traditional Anglo-American Canadian foreign policy where Canada stayed out of, mostly out of the Iraq war. Uh, But if you take that away, is there, do you see that much difference between uh, Harper and the Liberals when it comes to the issue of the United Nations and international law? In the case of Iraq, the Harper government, or the the Chrétien government didn't go go into Iraq, and that's mostly because there was 150,000 people on the streets of Montreal opposing that. 
So they didn't give the official endorsement, but they did actually provide a whole bunch of different forms of support uh, to to Washington in that war, and they may have been the fourth or fifth biggest contributor quietly uh, to the to the war effort in Iraq. And and the the, the just stepped down head of the Canadian military, Walter Nadinsink, was actually in charge of thirty five thousand troops in Iraq at one point. He was he was. Uh, Tied in with the U.S., uh, being tra- being uh, leading efforts down in the U.S., and then he actually went to Iraq and and uh, participated. So there was a bunch of different forms of Canadian support for Iraq, uh, but not the most important form, which was the official endorsement uh, of the coalition of the willing. And uh, and the reality is, the history is, is that Canada has generally uh, gone along with American military endeavors, uh, be it uh, going back to the Korean War, 1950-1953, and, uh, and continuing on and, and to Libya. And I think that the Canadian, there's something like 250 different um, uh, agreements between the Canadian military and the American military. There's very close ties. Most of you know the purchasing of the F-35 fighter jets that the Conservative government is is pursuing is is a, is a way to be interoperable with the American military or to be you know well tied into. And then that's a big for this interoperability is a big uh, phrase because m- mo- most I think of the Canadian military is interoperable with the American, is it not? Exactly, and the point there is to be able to to not duplicate what the American military does, but to be uh, easily uh, you know. Become uh, uh, you know another uh, segment, if you like, of, of the American military, and and I think the whole conception, the dominant conception of Canadian military planners is is to is to be an, uh, an added segment to uh, to the uh, to the American uh, American war machine. So you know every added dollar to uh, Canadian military spending is to to some extent an added dollar to to American military spending. So so should should, should the title of your book been the uglier Canadian? <laughs> It, it certainly could have been. Uh, what the Harper government has done is deepened the pro-militaristic, pro-imperial, pro-corporate elements in Canadian foreign policy. It didn't, it didn't create them. There's a long history uh, going back to Canada's ties with the British Empire, and then uh, post-World War II, been very tied into the American Empire. So it's not something that's just uh, novel uh, in the case of the history of Canadian foreign policy, but the Harper government has really deepened uh, these elements of these pro-corporate, pro-imperial elements of, uh, of Canadian foreign policy. Okay, we're going to continue our interview with, with Eve and go through other chapters of the book which deal with other elements of Harper foreign policy. So look forward for that or look towards that. And don't forget, we're in the midst of our fundraising campaign for 2012. We have a $100,000 matching grant. And uh, if you click on that do- donate button, every dollar you donate gets doubled, which means in 2013 we can keep doing the real news. So please click on it, because if you don't, we can't do this.